And we found, believe it or not, now these are athletes. They're not the world's greatest athletes, but they middle-aged up to, say, 40 from 25 to 40. They're all lean and they're all training. And 10% of them, sorry, 30%, three of the 10 were pre-diabetic on the high-carb diet. They had no clue. When they went on the high-fat diet, disappeared, completely normalized. So that proves to us that it's the carbs. It's not the lack of exercise, it's not the obesity, because all that changed in the trial was they cut the carb content. They didn't cut the calories, and they didn't do more exercise or, more, or lose weight. So the only thing that changed was their carb and probably you could say processed food intake. Yeah. And their diabetes completely disappeared. And we've also got a link to their metabolism because those who burnt the most fat, remember we said three grams per minute, they were the ones who had the best glucose control and benefited the most. So many of those were the ones who were pre-diabetic, who scored these very high fat oxidation rates. So there's something going on there as well. Very so there's where DOM fits in to okay. those studies. And we've so those are the studies that we're doing at the moment. And as I've said, we'll have some results by the end of the year. So the problem arises. So I told you the 1939. Yes. These three guys, Boye, Christensen, Sorry. and Hansen. They're from they're in Stockholm. Okay. And Boye, Boye is the main he's the main researcher, but he's also the main subject. So he gets on the bicycle and pedals for as long as he can. Okay. And what can they measure? They can measure blood glucose. So they measure blood glucose and they can measure oxygen as well. So his glucose goes like this and then it drops and he becomes exhausted and he can't do anything. And they gave him some glucose. And of course, and within five minutes, he's starting to feel better. And in 20 minutes, he says, fine, I can go on forever. And he goes on forever, you see. So so they show that as his blood glucose falls, he starts to feel tired and weak, and they reverse that, and he's fine. But they also showed another thing, which has been forgotten. They showed, they confirmed, or as best they could, that that glucose, all it was doing was raising the blood glucose. It wasn't being used by the muscles to any great extent. Any, it wasn't increasing muscle glucose use. And they do, and there it is. All it is, they said, okay, what happens? As you exercise, your glucose falls and you must take the glucose and then that in the brain slowing you down because you can't you can't continue or you'll damage your brain. There's too little glucose for the brain, so it stops. And you reverse that. So they said it's a central brain mechanism that stops you. So 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 a year and a half ago, I look at my the slides I've been projecting for 40 years. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I notice in that original study from these Scandina also Scandinavians, I notice a problem. That although they show your muscle glycogen goes down, at the same time, they show your blood glucose goes down. And so when you're exhausted, the blood glucose is extremely low. Uh -huh. And they said, oh, we can ignore the glucose. It's all muscle glycogen. But you can't do that because the whole theory up to that point was it's the blood glucose that's important. Yeah. So that's what made me start questioning what was happening. Was the blood glucose the real regulator or was it the muscle glycogen? Okay. And that's why we started testing these different trials to see if you start exercise with low muscle glycogen, can you perform well? And we said, yes, you can. So therefore, the idea that you have to have muscle glycogen is false. And so, so that's the basic point at this point. I, we, we will show it, I hope, in these trials. That as long as you keep your glucose normal, carbohydrates are irrelevant. You can burn fat, you can burn fat or carbohydrates, doesn't matter. But you can't allow the glucose to fall because that's when you're in trouble. 